from the beautiful city, Chicago, Illinois, Comcast Sportsnet presents White Sox Baseball. It's Paul Canerco, Adam Dunn, A.J. Pierzynski and the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Vernon Wells, Troy Hunter, and the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Hi, everybody, and welcome. With Steve Stone, I'm Ken Harrelson. We get set to bring you the finale of this three-game set and the finale of this homestand. In the first two games, the Angels have won them. They won 4-3. to three. 200 runs beat us in the first game. Then yesterday, it was just too much. Tyler Chatwood picking up his first Major League victory. Angels won it 7-2. to two. So the Sox now trying to get back on the board today with Mark Burley. Mark Burley going for win number 150, and he's doing that for the third time. Now, he's had trouble lifetime against these Angels. He's 2-6 and six with an ERA in the mid-fours. He's got an opponent out there today that's 3-0 and oh with an ERA under one, and that's Dan Heron. The good news is Dan Heron has never beaten the Sox, although it's been a limited sampling. He's 0-1 against them. But Heron throwing the ball just exceptionally well. And one thing to bear in mind is these Angels haven't swept the Sox in this ballpark since 2005. So when all you have to look forward to is a 5-5 five and five homestand, and we can do that with a win today, we got to go out and get them. All right, sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way. White Sox baseball.
And only from Comcast. Don't miss the action. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. What a beautiful day for baseball. It's still a little chilly, but complete opposite of yesterday. No rain expected. There are a few clouds in the sky. The wind, which has been a big factor in this series, is blowing out toward left center field. Sox at four and five on this homestand. It's been a little disappointing to this point, but they can even it at 500 with a big win today. And Mark Burley going on the mound, looking for win number 150. So we'll see how Mike Sosha is going to line him up today. Get Miser is tourist leading it off, and then Howie Kendrick, Bobby Abreu, Tori Hunter, Vernon Wells, who's off to a very slow start, Alberto Cayaspo, Mark Trumbo, Jeff Mathis behind the plate, and Peter Borges in center field. The defense and how they're going to line up behind Mark Burley, left to right, Pierre Rios and Quentin in the infield. Vizquel getting the nod at third base today with Ramirez, Beckham, Canerco, A.J. Pierzynski starting once again. He's never been on the disabled list in his entire career, which is somewhat remarkable. Here's our Lexus Pursuing Perfection starting pitcher, and it is Mark Burley. 1-0 this year. He's been pitching in some tough luck. The last time out, he was absolutely brilliant going eight innings. Shutting him out, unfortunately, Sox did not come away with a victory for him. The skipper of the Angels, Mike Sosha, has his team playing pretty good, solid baseball right now. They're nine and five. They do trail Texas by one full game. However, Josh Hamilton is out for six to eight weeks, and that's a big part of their offense. And Ozzie Guillen, knowing that he's going on the road after today for 30 of the next 38, would love to come away with a victory here today, but to do that, you've got to beat. 3 0, Dan Heron. So they've thrown a ball around the infield. We're ready to play baseball on a beautiful day, and I'll turn it over to my play by play partner, Hawk Harrelson. All right, Stone Pony, thank you. And once again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Finale of the series and finale of this homestand. Switch hitting shortstop, Meiser is tourist, gets set to lead it off against our 32 year old South Paul Mark Burley in the first pitch, taking for a ball. 55 degrees at game time. And there's a strike, one and one. And here at beautiful U.S. Cellular Field, 330 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 375 in the gaps, and 400 straightaway center. As he checks it up and takes ball two. Angels come in hitting at 263 as a club with a very fine 2.72 ERA. And that's trouble. So as tourists. Picks up his seventh hit of the series in 11 at bats. This tourist has been remarkable in that as a switch hitter, he's been devastating from both sides of the plate. 364 right handed, 356 left handed. And Mark tries to throw a cutter and gets too much of the plate with this one. And his tourist, whose brother Caesar also played in this league for a long time, winds up with a two base hit. And that'll bring up the second baseman, Howie Kendrick, hitting at 305, five homers. He's driven in seven. He is two for ten in this series with a homer that coming yesterday. And takes first pitch strike. Well, you can't allow him to pull the ball the way Ramirez is playing. Because Ramirez is playing up the middle, there's a huge gap on the left side. Kendrick trying to stay inside with those hands. He did, but he was underneath it. And the count nothing in two. Sox after the game will board the charter. Head on down to St. Pete, four with the Rays. And then from there, go up to Detroit for three. And then from there, go over to New York for four. So 11 games in 11 days. And that's by Ramirez hit the foot of Burley. So as tourists will stop at third. Runners at the corners. Nobody out. Trouble of Bruin right here. Well, unfortunately, that hit that gap. 
to the right of Alexi. Deflected right off the foot. And with runners at the corners and nobody out, Mark Burley in a big jam. When you're going against Dan Heron, who has less than a one point ERA this year, you can't give up too many early. Well, he's going to forget about the man at third. And the Bertucci boys, everything's okay. They're in the house. Let's bring him on the road with us. Jose's are gone. <laughs> no, he's coming. He's he's coming on the road. <laughs> oh, good, yeah. good. I'm glad. Ray, you hitting at 294. A homer he's driven in four. Checks it up, fouls it off. So one and one to count to the 37-year-old veteran who has hit barely well, nine for 15. Goes through that one. Outfield, slightly to the left. You can just get him to hit the ball on the ground. You'll give up the run for two. Try to stay out of the big inning. And if you can get out of here with just one run, you would consider it very successful. He gone. He went to the changeup, lefty on lefty, and you don't have to tell Mark that he's had problems with Abreu, so perhaps he's gone to the inventor pitch. Something I don't think Abreu's seen a lot of, and Mark had him well out in front of him. Well, you and I have talked about it over the last three years many, many times, and it just baffles and befuddles us both. Yeah. Why they don't throw lefty lefty changeups more often than they do. That's popped up in the right field. Quentin is there. So as tourists will tag and score and it's one nothing angels. Well especially when. Especially when it is. Their best pitch. Yep. And the same thing holds true with John Danks lefty lefty. RBI number 10 for Tory Hunter. Carlos kind of double clutched in right field with that one maybe he didn't have the handle on it. Well, he wasn't going to throw his tourists out. Nope. He just didn't know where he wanted to go with it. <laughs> As here is Vernon Wells. Three for eight in the series, hitting at 140. So the Angels have something to look forward to when this man gets cranked up. There's a curveball strike. I think, like anything else, even when you're a veteran, and even when you've been around as long and as successfully as Vernon Wells has, when you get traded over to a new team, you want to do everything in that first couple of weeks to show them that you can still really play. And he gone. Tuna. Picked him off. So first and third, nobody out. They only score one after happening a play. It's one nothing. That guys.
Today against a very tough game. Heron. It's going to be Pierre leading off with Beckham. Dunn, the DH, and Canerco, Quentin, Rios, AJ, Ramirez, and Omar. The defense and on the lineup behind Heron left to right. Wells, Borges, and Hunter in the infield. Cayaspo is tourist. Kendrick and Trumbo. Mathis behind the plate. And the Lexus pursuing perfection pitcher is Dan Heron, who's 3 0 this year. An immaculate ERA. You can see right handers and left handers, neither have done anything to it. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours as Juan Pierre will lead it off corners and close. First pitch strike from the 6 5 right hander out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Pierre hitting at 317, no homers, he's driven in six. Sox coming in hitting at 273 as a club with a 4.12 team ERA. Opponents hitting just 131 against this guy. His wipeout pitch is a very good splitter. He's got excellent control. He came out of the St. Louis organization. Well, we both have seen some highlights of him through his first three victories, and it just seems like certainly when they're doing something well in the highlight films, but that splitter of his was just awesome. It's a devastating pitch when he gets ahead of you. Clips that one foul, souvenir left side. He went to Oakland from St. Louis. Had some good years. In fact, three years in a row, 14, 14, and 15 wins before being shuttled off to Arizona, where he had his best year at 16 and 8 in 08. As he strikes him out, one down. So with one out, let's check out our picks to click. Jimangio, our director and crew. Well, they went with Fiskell. Stone Point is going with Adam Dunn. Alexi Stafford, along with the Hawthorne boys, Alexander, Nicholas, down in Granger, Indiana. We're going to go with A.J. Pierzynski. Beckham looking for it, got it, and underneath it. Gordon hitting at 263, a couple of homers. He's driven in eight. Deep. Stay fair. Stay fair. God damn it. And the count nothing and two. Aaron has given up one home run this year in 25 innings. And that, but for about 10 feet, would have been his second. Well, he spends about as much time over that rubber as anybody in this league. Very, very deliberate wind up and delivery. Well, he's had a history of a lot of physical problems. Ball gets away. And Beckham, he's going to reach. That's a problem when your wipeout pitch is a splitter. Unless your catcher is exceptional, and Mathis is pretty good behind the plate, a few of them get away. So that's probably going to go as strikeout wild pitch. That'll be the second wild pitch. Bottom just drops out of that. It could be considered a pass ball, but it is a wild pitch. So here's Adam Dunn. Adam hitting a 207. A couple of homers. He's driven in seven. Five time against Heron. He's faced him seven times. Has two hits. One of which stayed in the park. Takes that pitch downstairs. Heron came over from Arizona for Joe Saunders, Rafael Rodriguez, Patrick Corbin, and Tyler Skagg. So it took four players to get him. Just a decent lead by that. And that fastball outside.
Pauly on deck. And done with the catbird seat. Watch out. Mathis is pretty quick to hand the plate. Two and one to count. And he gets back even. One of the reasons why we've seen Mathis today is that Conger, who is a switch hitter, has zero at bats from the right side. So there is a platoon system at this point. Social goes through his set of signs to Mathis. That's what he wants him to do. So he strikes him out. Three in a row struck out by Heron. That'll bring up Pauly. So Heron with a chance to pick up four strikeouts here in the bottom of the first inning. Well, he's always around the plate. In his three starts, he's walked a total of two guys. Well, he probably is going to pick up more to the eye of the hitter. That's the real guns. It's not the radar guns that. We got behind the screen and everything else. The real radar guns are the eyes of the hitter. And because of that splitter, he's throwing about 90. So he's not going to overpower you. No, nope. never, never has been that kind of pitch. But by the time that you get looking at that splitter and then that breaking pitch, that thing looks like about 97 coming in there. Tops that one foul. They even accounted one. To talk with Heron about his early years with St. Louis, and he said that a lot of St. Louis pitchers come in with four seam fastballs and they throw pretty hard. Coming up through the St. Louis system, they teach them all how to sink the ball. And he said that's one of the reasons why they've been successful and they get as many double plays as they do. Hitters do not care how hard you throw, as long as it's fairly straight. What they don't like is movement. Paulie hitting at 327, four homers, 13 driven in, takes that strike, and now the count one and two. Now Mathis is going through a set of signs with nobody at second base. And that's when your manager or coaches believe that somehow. The other team might be picking up your signs. Otherwise, you use just one finger. Beckham took off. Well, a lot of clubs will vary that. There's some paranoia involved in. Uh, usually, when that's the case, that particular club themselves is picking up signs. It could very well be. But he looks over at Socha. Then he'll put down a set of signs, something you don't usually see unless a man's at second base. Two out, two balls, two strikes. Outfield bunch just a bit. Park and Echo. Troy Hunter well over into right center field. Probably could dump one somewhere close to that right field line in fair territory. What job? We'd have ourselves a tie ball game. Long look in. And the 2 2 pitch. Out and around that one and chops it foul. I still get a kick after all this time. About people thinking the stealing signs is bad. 
Part of the game. It's been part of the game since they invented the game. 30 years. Yes, sir. <laughs> and it's going to be a part of the game for 130 more. Ground ball to his tourist up with it. Over to Kendrick, and that'll retire the side. Nothing across. After one, it is one nothing Halo. Blackhawks and Canucks face off for game three at the United Center. Coverage begins at 6.30 with Chevy Blackhawks pregame live. Blackhawks Canucks tonight at 6.30 only on Comcast Sportsnet. Vernon Wells was at the plate when Burley picked off. Kendrick to end the first inning. 1-2-0 and for them. No runs, no hits, no errors for us. As Wells has absolutely worn Mark out. 38 at bats, 19 hits. Which is pretty unusual for a right hand hitter. You don't see that a lot from the righties. There's a strike and the count two and one. Angels have not swept the Sox in our ballpark since 2005. Change up. Well, we had a seven game winning streak against these guys at the opening of this series. Omar. And that's our number one. We had played them nine times last year. They won the first two, and we won the last seven. Well, they've got a couple guys at the top of their rotation that are awfully tough. And that's Weaver and Hare. They have a good starting staff. As Kai Aspel <laughs> takes strike one. Chetwood was pretty good yesterday. Santana's not bad. Nope. He is not. As Kai Aspel pops it up. Alex. Can of corn. Two down. This is a guy you got to worry about somewhat because he's a guy you'll fool a couple times and then he'll make an adjustment. Combo is big and very strong. Just 25 years old, hitting at 260, a homer he's driven in four, two for seven in this series. Last year at Oklahoma City, or Tech, that Salt Lake City, hit 301, 36 homers, and drove in 122. That's a lot of runs to drive in in 140 games. Watch out. Right back through the middle of bullet. It's going to be interesting to find any playing time for this guy when Kendry Morales, who is in extended spring in Arizona, finally comes back. They're thinking around the 1st of May. Tomorrow, 
they're going to probably activate Eric Ibar. You put him in the middle. You've got yourself between Ibar and his Taurus. Interesting combination, but Kiaspo is hitting everything in sight, so they'll have a very interesting dilemma when Ibar comes back. Well, Trumbull probably is back in Salt Lake City. You would, uh, well, you got to have him play. He's 25 years old. You got to have him get his at bats. When Morales comes back, he will. When Ibar comes back, you'd have to think that Wood would not be taking any long term leases in Anaheim. 2 0. Count two and one. Well, Morales, best hitter on that ball. Game. Well, what a strange injury he had celebrating a walk off at home plate. There's a man about a cola. And that'll retire the side. Nothing across after an inning and a half. Still one nothing. Real time with White Sox in game live only on CSNChicago.com. Brought to you by The Great Escape. Ah, you can escape right into those nachos. They make you feel real good after the game. One nothing. Bad guys here in the bottom of the second. Quentin Rios and Pierzynski to face the 6 5 right hander Dan Heron. Twenty games over in his career, ninety-four and seventy-four. Top of the fourth down in St. Pete, one nothing Rays over Minnesota. That's where we'll be going after this ball game. Right off the end of the bat, Carlos Quinn yesterday, one hundredth home run. Yesterday. Takes it up. And the count two and one. Another one right off the end of the bat. He ran out of Pepperdine University. He was used as a pitcher and a designated hitter. And St. Louis did not want to give him up. But they did to bring Matt Holliday over to that organization. Good eye, good take.
Indians leading Baltimore 4 1. That's a progressive field. Bottom of the sixth. Boy, they're getting some pitching. We knew they'd hit. I, I think the pitching is the most surprising aspect of what the Indians have done so far. Masterson has been pretty close to unhittable. And Carmona has rediscovered whatever he lost from opening day. Well, as he strikes out Quentin, that's the fourth strikeout for Heron. Well, people talking about how bad he was that day when he gave up all those runs, sure. But at first, it was just some terrific at bats from our hitters. They fought off a lot of tough pitches, went deep in the counts. And then after we got ahead by about five to nothing, he sort of packed it in a little bit then and started making a lot of bad mistakes and got hammered and gave up 10 runs. Cleveland is now fourth in the American League in pitching. And when we saw them, it looked like that might be very remote. Well, we talk about Coop. Talk about Mike Maddox. There's airs the strike. Rios. Tim Belcher. As we figured would do a heck of a job as that pitching coach with the Indians. Former Sox right hander. That doesn't always work this way, but it has in the case of the Indians. It's getting his Drupal Cabrera back and getting Orlando Cabrera at second base. They're fourth in the league in pitching because they're second in the league in defense. They've only they only hit six errors. And that young fellow behind the plate is going to be something. Santana. Yes, sir. The ball hit in the right field. That's a can of corn for Hunter. So two out, and that'll bring up AJ. That's our ace in the booth. Joe Grube has pointed out he just dropped off his pace to strike out 27 men. Put that fly out to right field. The mayor. Joe Grube. Once again, is wrong. Well, he can have another four strikeout inning. Or close to it. He could. AJ. He's due. He's 0 for 6 in the first two games of this series. 3 for 11 lifetime off Heron. And the count 0 and 2. At least you guys follow the ball off in the other direction. First tendency is to think that the pitcher is overpowering, throwing good fastballs. With Heron, not necessarily the case. And look at this. Stay fair. It will. Thank you very much. Just pokes it. Took what he got, and you can cancel a post game show. Aaron's hey, been hitting line shots all over the ballpark. <laughs> Coming up empty now. Look at this one. Aaron stayed away with everything, and finally on the last pitch, AJ, who's in full defense mode, just able to bloop it over the head of Kiaspo. And keeps the inning alive. Alexei fouls it back. Three for seven in this series, hitting at 294. Twins have tied up the Rays at four. Grabs a strike with that fastball at sinker at 91. Outfield slightly to the left, they're bunched. Kiaspo way off the line at third. Top 
Jones in the middle, backhanded by Kendrick. And they get him a second. So that'll retire the side. We'll go to the third trailing one zip. And it's amount of innings hit by active left-handers. And as you can see, by a small margin, but substantial enough. It's Mark Burley atop the leaderboard, then Barry Zito, CC Sabathia, and Randy Wolf. First pitch strike to Peter Borges. Borges hitting a 222 with a homer. And he has five RBIs. He's a speedster. He's got to watch the bunt, and you can't play him too deep in the infield. Because if you do on a chopper, you can't throw him out. That's why Alexi's a, a little closer in the infield than he normally is. Pops him up softly right side. One down, now back to the top of the order with Meiser, his tourists. Double the lead off the ball game and scored. One three and zero oh for their guys. No runs, one hit, no errors for our guys. This tourist has turned into just a terrific player. There's another double. So he's two for two, picks up his seventh two back. He is swinging the hot bat. Mark tried to get another cutter, it looked like inside on him, and just couldn't get it there. He's eight for 12 in this series. So here's Kendrick. He single back through the middle off the foot of Burley. Takes first pitch strike. Big gap in left center. Nicer is two for four in stolen bases and going one out in this situation. We'd like to get him thinking a little bit. And the count. Two strikes.
Kendrick originally signed with these Angels, 10th round in 2002. He gone. He knew it. We have some bench for out number two. AJ wants it on the outside corner. Mark cuts that ball, and he couldn't have thrown it in a more perfect spot. Kendrick gave up on it, and he realized that sometimes you just have to credit the pitcher with making the perfect pitch. Second strike out for Burley, and here was the first one. Bobby Abreu. Field straight up, not equidistant, and spread out. Tampa Bay has scored a run, leading 2 1 over the Twinkies, still hitting in the bottom of the fourth. And that's trouble. So Bray Hughes going to knock in a run, and it's a 2 0 Angel lead. First time up, he kept the ball away and got him on a changeup, and that time. Like he tried to heat him up inside, and Abreu, who has always tormented Mark Burley, just drives it down the line. He's 10 for 17. And that's a cutter that had way too much of the plate, and he drives in his fifth run. And here's Torrey Hunter. Had a sacrifice fly to right field. Took his head off that one. That back. That's up high. One and two to the thirty five year old veteran. But they pick up another one, a couple of doubles. It is 2 0. Sportsnet Plus. The Sox at the road to take on the Rays. Coverage begins at 5 with Felco White Sox pregame live. White Sox Rays tomorrow night at 5 on Comcast Sportsnet Plus. Fans' best friend. Tampa has started to really heat it up. They're winners of five in a row. But their record is 6 and 8. And they picked a very good time to play Minnesota. 
Flips that one into left field. And that's going to ball fall for a base hit by Vizquel. So the leadoff man aboard. Omar came in three for 26 lifetime against Heron. And for some reason, Vernon Wells was playing a lot deeper than he probably should have played in left field. Omar just flips it in the left. Well, he didn't have much experience when he faced him those 26 times. Probably not. No, he was a young man of 36 and 7. Now at 43, he is vastly more experienced. Close to 44 now. As here is one. Takes the butt, takes the strike. Omar will be 44 in a week. The 24th. And in magnificent shape. Okay, ass ball in on the grass at third. Castro is not going to dazzle you with his defense. He was a major leaguer, as we saw with Kansas City as a second baseman, and his range hurt him. But at third, you need first step quickness. You don't need the greatest of range. 2 1 pitch. Right? And that's fouled away. So 2 and 2 the count, and a reminder join the White Sox Volunteer Corps. A team of fans will work side by side with us in our efforts to make a difference for others. Together we can be a powerful force for change. Visit whitesox.com slash volunteer corps for more details. Down ball right side. We get the lead man, and that's it. Aaron's pretty quick to first. For a big man, he's got unusually quick feet. Normally, they don't see a guy that's 6'5 able to get it over there that quickly. He doesn't have, however, the shortest delivery around, so. You can get a lead and guess right. Juan will break out of his 0 for 5 running slump. Especially on that splitter. Now Beckham says timeout. Well, you gotta take what Heron's gonna get. Can't get greedy against him. One of the interesting things about certain hitters, whether you like this guy or not, he was a great hitter. I don't like him, but he was a great hitter. And that's Bonds. Barry Bonds. Was a great hitter. And he knew, in talking about pitchers, he knew what he could do off certain guys. Most importantly, he knew what he could not do off certain guys. And didn't try to do it. Well, what I thought was amazing was because he was so far and away the star of that offensive lineup. He knew in the course of four at bats he might get two pitches to hit. And when he was going well, he hit both of them exceptionally hard. They were going to play Atlanta and they'd be facing Glavin, Smoltz, and Maddox. Down the third, Kiaspo up with it, right over the top over the first. So they get the out. Two down. And he will be talking to the guys about I can get Glavin. Next day, I can get Schmoltz. Next day, how about how about Maddox? Can't get it. He won't he won't give me anything. So I'll just have to take what he gives me. Well, I realize the other two guys, somewhere in the course of the day, we're going to give him the one pitch that he would be looking for. 
He wasn't the only one couldn't get Maddox. No. Not many did. And I think Mathis was crossed up. That's why he's going out there to talk with Heron. Take a look at Mathis on this pitch and look how defensive he is. He's looking either for the splitter or the breaking ball, and he was just fortunate to be able to knock down the fastball. Adam struck out his first trip. Down and in. Left handed hitters are not going to get that pitch off this guy and do anything with it. Now, time is called. The Angels will head off to play the Rangers in Texas. In what should be an entertaining series. Comes back with a sinker. Got one coming down and in, one going down and away. Hard right to his Taurus. Right at him. And that'll retire the side. We're into the fourth trailing two zip. You buy the fourth meal from Taco Bell. Open 1 a.m. or later. Top of the fourth inning. Wells, Gaspo, and Trumbo to face Mark Burley. Wells got it out to Vizquel at third. Pitch didn't get it. Change up down. Two balls and a strike to the 32 year old outfield. Softly hit. And the lead man gone. Make your plans to be with us tomorrow night right here on Comcast Sportsnet. First of that four game set against Tampa Bay and first of that 11 game road trip. Four in Tampa Bay, three in Detroit, and four from the Big Apple. 
In that series starting tomorrow night, we're going to run Edwin Jackson, Johnny Danks, Phil Humber, Gavin Floyd to the bump. They're going to run Price, Shields, Davis, and Neiman. That's in the right field. And Kai Aspo is retired. He's now over two. The Yankees off to a pretty good start. They're in first place. Detroit, seven and eight this year. It looks, if you were going to look at the American League Central, like someone flip flop the division. It's Cleveland and Kansas City tied atop the division at ten and four. Minnesota, four and ten. That ball hit deep in the right field. Well, Trumbo, big strong right handed hitter, is taking him out of here, and it is 3 nothing. We talked about Trumbo before his first at bat. Now, somewhere along the line, they're going to have to find a place for him to play. Won't be first base because of Kendry Morales, but he's shown them enough. He's got a chance to be pretty good as our Ford home run replay shows you a ball down and out over the plate. And Trumbo with big power takes it the other way. Here's the catcher Jeff Mathis. Got it out to Alexa. Two and zero to the 28 year old receiver. That ball hang up there. It will. Thank you very much. That's a hang whiffle for Mathis, but the homer by Trumbo after three and a half. Angels by three. The 2011 season. Purchase a block of tickets or enhance your outing with one of six great party areas. Call 312 674 1000 or visit whitesocks.com. Domain of the Bertucci boys out there. Cleveland Lady Baltimore 4 2, top of the eighth at Progressive Field. Chris Perez has done a nice job as their closer. Has done just about everything right. Here's Pauly. To be followed by Quentin and Rios. There's a curveball strike. Well, he didn't care for that call. Only Alex Rios has made an out out of the infield through the first three innings. There's a shot base hit that a boy Pauling. Taking what he gives you right there. That 
fastball on the outer portion. It didn't have the whole plate, but it had enough of the plate for Paul's liking. And that'll bring up Carlos. Clinton, the strikeout victim, leading off the second. Little quick spinner. Yeah, it looked like a, a, a get me over cutter that he threw, just had enough of a spin on it so that Carlos says, I'll take this one. Had enough of a spin on it to make it a little tilt. And that's right on the outside edge, says Al Porter. Carlos does not like that call. The first one had the entire plate. That was the perfect pitcher's pitch that sometimes you don't get. In the big hole, nothing in two. And that's off the corner. Going two. Sixty pitch count for Heron at this point, which in three plus innings is a lot of pitches. Tops that one foul. And a reminder join the White Sox.com blacklist and receive the White Sox wire email newsletter featuring the latest team news and exclusive videos. Plus, get ticketing offers, breaking news alerts, and more. So visit White Sox.com backslash blacklist to join. Just joining us, Angels one in the first, third, and fourth. And this should be. Lead off man aboard and very quickly two down. It's a pretty good double play combination. This tour is very quick at shortstop. Well, no way anybody was going to outrun that one. Well, that's just Dan Heron's pitching right there in his control. Didn't give him anything in that sequence to hit. Nope. Except something on the ground for the double play. And here's Alex. He lined out hard. To Torrey Hunter in right field as he takes strike one. Minnesota now leading Tampa Bay 4 2. A game in the top of the fifth. Frankie still hitting. That's hit hard down to Kai Aspo. Sucks it up. And that'll do it. We'll go to the fifth. Not good.
Nine six five three, and if you are the 500th texter, you could win five five dollar foot long subs from Subway. Top of the fifth inning, three six and zero oh for their guys. No runs, three hits, and no errors for our guys. Peter Borges, there's a button you can stick it in your pocket. Well, that's always available to him, and he's going to do it once, sometimes twice a game. Once he gets it far enough away from the catcher, in this case AJ, no chance. Well, it's up to Alfredo Griffin right here, first base coach, to make sure that Borges hangs out close to that bag. He's already picked off. One guy. That was Howie Kendrick back in the first inning. To find a way to stop Pesuras from rifling the ball down the left field line, which he has done twice for two doubles, and he has scored two runs. There's a strike. Torres played all three infield positions, third, second, and short last year, committing just two errors. And this year, when Ibar went down, he took over as the everyday shortstop. And there's a look at Dino Ebel. Two one. And that's a souvenir right side. Just with all that speed, just one for one in stolen bases this year. And a full count. Got to get the hitter. Here's a good time to try to pick him off at first base. You might get Borges leaning the wrong way as you take a look at Kendrick in the on deck circle. Should be. Boy, Borges goes in hard at second base. Just really upends Beckham. Well, he got a good shot at him, and he tried everything he could to make sure that Gordon couldn't get the throw off, and he's going to feel the effects of that one. It's a tailor made two, but Borges does everything he can. He doesn't go after the bag, actually, elbows him in the thigh. Usually get you one under the chin the next time you came up. According to what area you're playing in. Nice. A lot of guys would forego the chin music. <laughs> just drill get, them. get a little ear music. Right yeah. in the ear. Yeah. Well, that's one of those things if you're Gordon Beckham or Alexa, you just file it. Next time he's on first base and you get a ball hit like that, you just go underneath and hit him right in the face or the chest. As there is ball four. Might have a chance to reciprocate later on in this ball game to one of theirs in second. Kendrick or his tourists. Especially with as many ground balls as Heron throws. So here's the Bray. 
A strikeout and an RBI double. Strike on the outside corner. Count 0 and 2. A double back in the third inning to knock in his tourists coming with two out. That was his first hit in 11 at bats in this series. Nice pick by Gordon. Stayed down with it. He comes up at all. He's not going to make that play. He did. We're halfway home when the trailer's way up. To be followed by Alexei and then this gal. AJ got our first hit. That coming with two out in the second inning. Little bloop over the head of Kayaspo, right inside the left field line. Tops that one foul to even the count at one. And there's a souvenir left side. A beautiful day here in the beautiful city. The only thing bad is that scoreboard. Three nothing. Angels. After the last couple of days, this one is beautiful. And he just beats that one foul. Had rain delays in the first two games of the series. No rain in sight today. Yes, he did. So that's the fifth strikeout for Heron, and it'll bring up Alexi. That one just drops well out of the zone. And AJ cannot check his swing. Good call by Phil Cousins. 
likes to hit into a 4 6 fielder's choice as he takes ball one. Do you have a chance to talk with Mike Squires today? I always talk with Mike. Right hand man of Walt Jockety of those Cincinnati Reds. He thinks and you and I, I know felt the same way in spring training. That Drew Stubbs might be the best unknown center fielder in all of baseball. Well he was the most impressive player I saw in Arizona this spring. Big strong and fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All those and more. Well, he hit one out in San Diego to dead center field, which is some trick. That's just foul, says Cuzzy. That was close. Tiaspo off the line. That ball right down the line. Just missed. So the payoff pitch. That one's fair. And that's out number two. Still only one out out of the infield. That coming off the bat of Rios in the second. Well, it's, when you're hitting against a guy like Heron, you've got to say to yourself, you got to make him get it up. You got to make him get it. That's the first thought on your mind. That way, all of a sudden, now you're gearing down low as Omar takes a strike. And that certainly does not mean that you're going to hit it hard anyway with that thought going up to the plate. Because he's not going to get too many pitches up. Omar hit a little single in the left field. And the count two and one. Now because of that single, Vernon Wells is playing shallow. And over toward the line in left field. Omar trying to move it into left. You can see left handers and right handers alike. Not too much luck with Dan here. This tourist. And that'll do it for us here in the bottom of the fifth. We still trail it three nothing.
Sportsnet. Coverage begins at 8 with McDonald's Bulls pregame live from the United Center. So join Neil Funk, Stacey King, and Scotty Pippen for game two of Bulls Pacers tomorrow night at 8 right here on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. First pitch up high to Torrey Hunter. Top of the sixth. Hunter is 0 for 1 with a sacrifice fly. Torrey Hunter, one of the many excellent players developed by the Minnesota Twins organization. Nice pick by Omar. <laughs> he was with, he was going. Come on, get here, get here, ball. <laughs> Omar doesn't have the big arm any longer, but he gets rid of it quickly. And Paul was pretty much hoping that the ball and Hunter did not arrive at the same place at the same time. <laughs> So here's Vernon Wells. He is grounded to Omar and he's grounded to Alexa. And that ball hit high and deep in the right center field. Alex back on the track. And he cannot get there. So Wells will make the turn. And go into third with a triple. Now that ball hit the top of the wall, and Mike Socha is going to say it's a home run. I think they're going to have to take a look at this and review it, but we'll see. As Bill Miller went out there to have a look, could very well have hit the yellow line and bounced straight up. Now, if it hits the yellow line and bounces straight up and back into the field of play, it's still in play. It does. And the umpires are going to meet. And they're going to have a discussion about this one. I don't think any fan touched it. So I don't believe it was out of the park. And so she also when he was coming back had a few words with Gordon Beckham. Second probably asking if he's okay. That ball's a triple. Stayed in the park. I think they're going to go in and have a look and review it. Hey, right, well, they do. A reminder you can join the Shy Sox mobile group today by texting Canerco. That's K O N E R K O. K O N E R K O for a chance to win an autographed Paul Canerco bat and four tickets to our Cinco de Mayo celebration on May 3rd. Plus Canerco to Shy Sox. That's 244769 to be entered to win. And we'll check a few scores for you. Bottom of the six down in Tampa Bay, Minnesota leading the Rays 4 2. Boston leading Toronto 4 1. That's in the bottom of the sixth at Fenway. Kansas City 1, Seattle nothing. That's in the bottom of the fifth at Kaufman Stadium. Pineda, the 6 7 right hander, on the bump for the Mariners. Houston leading San Diego 4 3. That was down at the juice box. 2 1, Rockies leading the Cubs. That's in the bottom of the first out in Denver. Meeting at the mound and awaiting the decision. Pretty clear cut. It appeared to be. But Mike Sosha's got to go out there. I mean, he's got nothing to lose by doing it. You don't get a charge only, timeout. You, you don't get only two chances like in football. You can throw the red flag a couple of times and then you're done. And they can't take a timeout away from you because there is no time limit. Now Rocky's leading four to one, still hitting bottom of the first. Against Ryan Dempster, who's not had a real good run at it, and it bounces straight up. The question for the umpires would be if they felt the fan had touched it, and he didn't. And Bill Miller was standing right out there, had a very good look at it. 
Also a reminder that the Aussie plan includes your choice of 13 games including the BP Crosstown Cup Series against the Cubs and matchups against the Twins the Yankees and the Red Sox. Now the Aussie plan is available right now and starts as low as one hundred seventy one dollars per seat. So call three one two six seven four one thousand or visit White Sox dot com. And if you're just tuning in Angels with one in the first one in the third one in the fourth. One home run in the ball game by Mark Trumbo, his second of the year, opposite field shot off Burley. And Southpaw, knowing that we will not be here for Easter Sunday, dressed up on his Palm Sunday in the bunny outfit. And of course, after the ball game, we will be departing for 11 games in 11 days. Four in Tampa Bay. As you check out our Falco upcoming schedule, four against the Rays, then up to Detroit, the three against the Tigers, and then over to New York, four against the Yankees. Not going to be the easiest of road trips. So the umpires come back out, and they say it is a triple. So Wells at third with one out. Vernon his first three bagger. And that'll bring up Kai Aspo, who has gone out to center, and he has gone out to right. The Sox bring the infield in. And that is out of play right side. They asked for one of seven switch hitters. Currently listed, some are disabled at this point. But Casco has been very good from both sides of the plate this year. Been very good against us every year. And that's inside two and one. The Cleveland wins again. They defeat Baltimore. And it's Fausto Carmona who has gotten it straightened out in his first game of the year. And a count three and one. I asked both 308 lifetime hitter against us. On in infield. Yeah, that's the real difference when you bring in the infield. That's why guys love to hit in those situations. Now, if you're back playing a normal third base, you've got a shot at that. Been drawn in, no shot whatsoever, and it's RBI number six for Diaspo. Just out of the reach of Omar Vizquel. And it's a four nothing into lead. So here's Trumbo, single sharply back through the middle, and he homer. Takes it up high. Two and oh the count. Here's a good strike. And the count moves to two and two. The Angels have not swept our socks. In the three games set here since 2005. Excellent opportunity to do so today. 
He gone. Two down. First time he got Trumbo, and he got him on the inside corner. He might have been looking away. That was a perfect pitcher's pitch. Just got the inside corner on the outside edge. So here's Mathis. Ties him off with a changeup. Back back in 05 when the Sox, Sox went 11 and 1 in postseason play to win the world championship. The only defeat was in the first game of that series against the Angels here. We lost it 3 to 2. One and one to count to Mathis. It's kind of falls back. He can to just the fall right back into it. Now he's not going to get too adventuresome on the base pads. He does not have great speed anyway. And the count two and one. So two out, two balls, two strikes. Boy just on deck. And it's full. Mathis all over that one just underneath it. This will be the 21st pitch of the inning. And he walks it. Second walk issued by Burley. Borges popped out to first, then had that butt single. Marcus always had a great deal of difficulty with this ball club. This girl back at third, and Borges faking the butt, taking the ball. Now feel for the most part straight up. And that's softly hit in the right field. And that'll retire the side. They put one on the board, triple by Wells, single by Guy Aspo, and they lead it for zip.
game live. Good analysis from Chuck and Bill. Plus, the live to Ozzy's post game remarks. So in this Galaxy White Sox post game live immediately following the game right here on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. Well, it's about time to get something going. Third time through the order against Heron, who's been keeping the ball down as well as we've seen anybody all year. Backdoor breaking ball. One is struck out, made into a 4 6 fielder's choice. Yeah, this is the best control we have seen this season. And for consistently staying down in the zone, and you brought up the point that not only is it down, but it it's moving in and out and down. It's a little tough. Nice pick by Kayas. Lead man gone. Well, there are some days you go out there and you run into a guy like Dan Heron today. He's got his he's got his good stuff, his good control. And as a rule, when that happens, you lose. Well, everybody's lost to him this year. Three starts, three and oh. Zero point seven three ERA. Well, the big thing to me was that when I looked at that opponent's batting average against at 131. <laughs> That's pretty good. There's the first breaking ball he's home. Gasper stays with it. And that's out number two. Apparently that sun not much of a factor because Kiaspo has a flip down shades, but doesn't flip him down. He's still able to make the catch. Well, as a rule, most of those flip down shades like that are for cosmetic effect. Well, there's some guys that have been around a while that prefer those. And there are a lot of guys who wear them and never put them down. It's true. I like the guys that wear the shades on the top of their hat. Cool breeze. <laughs> Adam. He's 0 for 2. Struck out in the first and hit a hard shot to the shortstop on the ground in the third. Now they have the shift on. Kendrick out on the outfield grass, as is his tourists. And that's in. The two two pitch. A one two three inning. He's retired eight in a row. He has six strikeouts, and we still trail four nothing.
see every White Sox game live or on demand on your favorite computer or your favorite devices. So visit WhiteSox.com to order. 4 9 0 for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. 0 3 0 for our Sox. Meister is tourists. Two for three. Two doubles. Two runs scored. Leads it off. One and one to count. Washington leading Milwaukee seven to two. Bottom of the seventh in D.C. And there's another base hit. Three for four today. Nine for 14 in the series. Bear in mind, this guy is not normally a starter. But they might have to find a place for him. There's Kendrick. He won for two. A single, a strikeout, and a walk. Activity. Jesse Crane starting to loosen up. Can't get that one. Decent lead by his tourists. Bobby Abreu, the on deck hitter. 23,458 in the house. Hit him on the fist. And Alex makes the catch. Yes, now they're going to get the double play. He didn't get a good read on it, broke back, and then that good speed of his recovers. Two out. Nice play by Rios. Nice recovery by Alex came on, made the catch, and it was very easy after that as his tourists thinking that Alex would have trapped it standing on second base. So here's a Bray you. I didn't think he was going to get there. He broke back a couple of steps on that one. As that is inside. Top of the eighth in Philadelphia, 2 2 tie with the Marlins. Mets leading Atlanta, 3 to 1, bottom of the seventh down in Georgia. There's a strike to Bray you. Mitz got off to a decent enough start and then decided to lose seven in a row. Including a twin bill to the Braves yesterday. Two out, two balls, two strikes. And turmoil for the last few years. Mets, combination of some terrible contracts and some big injuries. He gone. Seventh inning stretch. Not good.
10 and 0. For the Halos, no runs, three hits, no errors for our Sox. We have just absolutely been dominated by Dan Heron this afternoon as Pauly will lead it off, takes first pitch, breaking ball strike. Pauly, one for two, has the only hard base hit that we have. We have three. This was a line drive to center. And the count very quickly, nothing in two. I think that motion that Heron uses at times where he suspends that front leg throws off the hitter somewhat. That along with just spectacular control, especially today. You have to have a sense of control as a hitter. Heron wanted that pitch. And when you face a guy like Heron is today, it's hard to obtain that sense of control. When he keeps making pitch after pitch, B pitches. Well, he's thrown 30 and two thirds innings this year, and he's walked two. So he's going to be around the plate. He did not go. Sox used to have a staff like that back in the 60s and 70s, where they had guys like Joe Horland, Tommy John. They just kept making pitch after pitch after pitch on. There he got a pretty good pitch to hit. Breaking ball up. Heron knows he got away with a mistake right there. You haven't seen many of these today. Two. This is the second one. The last one was a back one. But that one was hung right over the middle of the plate. Just below the letters. Very hittable. Mathis tried to pull it and a full count. Carlos Quentin on deck, hoping to come up with Dan Heron in the stretch. Now, well, had two good pitches to hit in this sequence. Foul them both back. Heron about ready to deliver pitch number 95. But all it goes hand in hand with that looking down low of him. You got to make him get it up. All of a sudden now he hangs one on you and it's upstairs and geared down low and you will. Chances are foul it back. Or swing and miss it. One out. Pretty good battle. That time won by Heron again as he threw a fastball low and in. Well, he couldn't get the good part of the bat on it. Here's Carlos. He has struck out and also hit into a 6 4 3 double play. That was back in the fourth inning after Pauly let it off with a single. But in that sequence, to Quentin, of about five or six pitches, every one of them was just like that. He had no chance. You don't find many guys that suspend that front leg before they come home. Heron does, and I think it throws off the timing of the hitter. Well, we mentioned it earlier in the game. He's spent so much time over that rubber. That ball hit hard in the center field. Gorgeous. Back looks it off the top of the fence. Dead gun it. So the one out double by Quentin just missing a homer by a couple of feet. Two balls in a row hit in the air. And Carlos loves the ball down. This ball is out of the strike zone. He just misses hitting it out of the ballpark the 400 mark. Or just making sure he doesn't get trapped too close to the wall, gets it back in. But Carlos is in scoring position. Pick him up, Alex. Let's give him a finish right here. Let's get some runs. Get some points on the board. Out a big happy birthday, big Sox fan Dave Riley down in Valparaiso, who was 65 yesterday. Happy birthday, Dave. Look forward to seeing you at the ballpark here, buddy. Alfield bunch slightly to the left, checks it up, 
And takes ball one. Full pen up and going as Heron just about at the century mark. It's Rodriguez, hard throwing right hander, getting ready. Another check up and the count 2 0. AJ, the on deck hitter. Let's put a four spot on the board right here. And that's off the corner three and nothing. Now Mathis goes out there and that's most likely on a sign from Mike Sosha to allow that bullpen. About. Seven to ten extra pitches. The three oh pitch. Very generous call right there by Porter. That ball's just missing off the outside corner. Ball hard hit. Tourist. And throw everybody safe. That should be a base hit. And it is going as a base hit. Hard hit ball at shortstop. His tourist off balance tries to skip it across, but even if it's on the bag, you're not going to get Alex here. So here is AJ. AJ's one for two. Now Phil shading him around to left. And there's a base hit. So Carlos is being waved around. Hunter will get it back in. Alex in the third. And it's a 4 1 ball game. Don't stop now, boys. RBI number six for AJ. As he gets one right down the middle, you couldn't have cut the plate any better. As Heron appears to have lost it. Runners at the corners. It's a three run game with only one out here in the bottom of the seventh. And Mike Butcher goes out there to have a talk with Heron. Alexa Ramirez will be the hitter. Rodriguez and Takahashi going in the bullpen. Takahashi, the left hander on the right. Rodriguez, the right hander on the left. That's some of the. There's Alexei. Some of the people who are just learning how to speak English. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Sitting at home watching. <laughs> what the hell do you say? <laughs> there one pitch. And there's a base hit. Alex will score us a 4 2 game. Don't stop now, boys. You would think that that would be it for Dan Heron, but we'll have to wait to see what Mike Social wants. This pitch is out of the strike zone. And Lexi drives in his ninth run of the year. Isn't a bad pitch, but it winds up in left field. And here comes Sosha. So the skipper, the big right hander, has given him an excellent six and one third innings. 
And Dan Heron. Give him the ball. He'll depart. And we'll be back. Last year, pitched for the Mets. Improved very well, actually started 12 games and saved eight games. And this year, ERA up a little higher than he would like. He inherits base runners at first and third. Omar is going to turn around and go at him from the right side. And Dan Heron so far, seven hits. Four of them in this inning didn't walk anybody. Fan six. He's still in line for a win, but can get a no decision with a couple of more base hits here. So runners at the first and second. Two in, two on, one out. Omar is one for two. That base hit back in the third. Now feel short. Diaspo at the cut of the grass at third. And the first pitch, change up strike. We've seen Vernon Wells make one throw in this series, and he airmailed everybody. AJ was over talking with Jeff Cox. Turns that over. It's like a screwball. And the count one and one. 36 year old Southpaw. And that's outside. Two and one, one Pierre, the on deck hitter. Long look in, now he'll back it off. We hit a line drive down the right field line here. We got ourselves a tie game. Nope. Torrey Hunter. Two down. So two out and here's one. He's 0 for 3. He's due. And here comes Socia. 
Well, Takahashi is probably one of those guys that gets right handers out a little better than he gets the left handers. Especially knowing his ball club. Decides that one out is enough. So we'll step out and be back after these messages. And this time it's Francisco Rodriguez. There you look at the numbers. This is third game. Still runners at first and second. Did a few Francisco Rodriguez's pitch in Major League Baseball. And here's Juan Pierre. Alfield around to the left. Diaspo. At the cut of the grass at third, and there's one pitch. And that'll do it. But we put a pair on the board, we get right back into it. We'll go to the eighth, trailing by two. <laughs> On the board in the bottom of the seventh, we trail it 4 2. And for the Halos here in the eighth, it'll be Hunter Wells and Kiaspo to face. Jesse Crane. He's 0 and 1, ERA 284, on for the sixth time. 
Okay, Aspo will turn around and face him from the left side for the first time. At first, he's got to get by two right handers, two veteran right handers. Torrey Hunter 0 for 2 with a sacrifice fly. For a ball strike. Top of the ninth down in Atlanta. 3 2 Mets. Top of the eighth at Fenway, 6 1 Red Sox over Toronto. Top of the ninth down in St. Pete, 4 2 Minnesota. Two and one, the count. Just tuning in. That's where we'll be going down to St. Pete. We'll take on the Rays. First of a four game series tomorrow. First of an 11 game road trip. Fernando Rodney throwing in the bullpen. Two and two to count. In the four games, we're going to run Edwin Jackson starting tomorrow night. Then Johnny Danks, the number, Bill Umber, and Gavin Floyd. They're going to run David Price, James Shields, Wade Davis, and Jeff Nima. He gone. Yes, upstairs. And once again, we're going to miss Hellickson, who's thrown today. Edwin Jackson has never lost to his former mates, and we have been very tough for David Price to beat. And that's coming at you tomorrow night. And it'll be right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Now the Monday. Wednesday and Thursday games will be right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Tuesdays will be over WCIU. Vernon Wells all over that one and underneath it. Thank goodness. has very good career numbers against Jesse Crane in limited action against him. Nice pitch and an out front off balance. And that is out number two. And a reminder, season ticket plans offer the best seat locations at the lowest prices with the most benefits. Prorated full season weekday and weekend plans are available right now. Start less than $500 per seat. So call 312-674-1000 or visit whitesox.com. Diaspo, one for three. With an RBI single. That's going to be in the LG Skyline Club seats. And a nice day for it on the third base side with bright sunshine, warming things up a bit. Field. Straight up for the most part, spread out that equal distance. One and one to count. Guy Aspo. There's a hook and the count one and two. One, two, three, and for Crane, we'll go to the bottom of the eighth. We need two to tie.
See of Alex Rios. He had a long run. This one off the end of the bat. As Torres camps at second base and then an easy throw to first and it's a double play. Alex Rios. Our home depot doing more on defense. That'll bring in Fernando Rodney. Who has had his problems with his control. Six walks and six and two thirds innings, and yet the ERA is still at 270. He's got a great straight change. But Rodney can have some problems finding that strike zone. This is his eighth appearance. Gordon Beckham gets set to lead us off. Strike right on the outside corner. Rodney was the closer before he lost that job to Walden. Who we saw in the first game of the series. You know, Rodney can get it up there. He touched 97 a couple of times. Won't fight. And he's just got an awesome changeup. The yeah. motion is absolutely identical with that 97 mile an hour fastball. If he could consistently get the ball over the plate, He'd be unhittable. He would be unhittable. Two and one. The only way you're going to beat him is on the fastball. Unless he gets a changeup up in your eyes. So he can throw it. Rodney, 34 years old, 5'11, 220. Got yeah. that one upstairs. And that was a fastball. At 94. And that is bounce foul. Made a good pitch and a good job by Gordon just to fight that one off. Got in on him. And that is out number one. Gordon now 0 for 4. And a reminder keep an eye out for Dog Day presented by Hills Pet Nutrition. That's Tuesday, May 17th. Sox versus the Rangers at 7 10 p.m. So for more information on Hills Pet Nutrition, visit hillspet.com slash wait. I love Dog Day. And and here is that. Adam Dunn. Adam 0 for 3 today. Takes first pitch strike. That one at 96. Got the shift on again with Kendrick. Back about eight or nine steps on the grass. Come on, Adam. Get on for Paul. Nice catch off the facade in the LG Skyline Club seats. Not an easy play. That ball caroms above your head and comes bouncing back to you. And once again, the one two. 
96 up and out of the zone. Paul hoping to come up representing the tying run. What a change up that was. That one of 84. This one just dives out of the zone. And that was over the right handed batter's box. So here's Polly. Polly one for three. Just smoked a single to center field leading off the fourth inning. Got in on him just enough. And Rodney's going to have himself a quick one, two, three inning. And we'll go to the ninth, four, two, eight. And it was the second hit of the day and an opposite field home run off the bat of Mark Trumbo. His second of the year. And Jesse Crane's first pitch. That the play. Caught this girl playing way back. Ball. Jesse got that one up and got away with it. Trumbo looks good at the play. What those numbers? You look at those numbers last year at Salt Lake City, the 301. 36 homers, 122 knocked in. That's why sending him down is going to be a little tough. There's not much to prove down there for him well, now. But he's got to get at bats. There's no doubt. He's got to keep playing, swinging that bat. Kendry Morales is. We talked about earlier, best hitter on this ball club. Walden and Thompson. It stays four to two, and undoubtedly will be Walden. Angel score a few. It'll be Thompson. Tumble. Six four, two hundred twenty pounds. He's got good, good actions.
Two balls, two strikes. Chris Sale loosening in the pen. Jesse Crane in his second inning of work. He gone. Third strikeout for Crane. One down. And that'll bring up Mathis. Goes up and out of the strike zone. And he gets him. One to count. That ball hit in the center field. Alex is there, two down. For us, in the bottom of the ninth, it'll be Quentin, Rios, Pierzynski, and hopefully a few more. So here's Borges. One for three, a bunt single. Curveball strike. Al Porter's done a good job. This is the second time we've seen him. We saw him at the end of last year. He did a good job. He's done another good one today. He hasn't been a whole lot of complaints at no, all. He's done a good job. And the count one and two. You figure 300 pitches being thrown. <laughs> I don't get every one of them right. One, two. Here you go. Four strikeouts for Jesse. All right, boys. Don't stop now. We need two to tie. And it's Jordan Walden, the hard throwing right hander. Pretty good number so far. He has yet to give up anything. He's looking for his third save. Seven in the third innings, just two hits, nine strikeouts, and two walks. We saw him in a very wet opening game of the series. And he threw the ball very well.
So here we go. 23 year old right hander. On Friday he was going anywhere from 96 to 98 mostly 98. Uh, Fort Worth Texas 6 5 235. So Carlos will lead it off. He's one for three. He started off that. Two on seventh with a one out double. That went at 99. Walden was a starting pitcher through 09 after signing with the ball club in 07. And they moved him into the pen. That went at 98. Looked like a cutter. Or in his case, and that a sailor. Whew. That was nasty. Yeah, that, that last pitch is unhittable. Yeah, I'm not sure what he did exactly with it, but if he doesn't forget how to do it, he's going to be really tough. The ball slicing away, and it's going to fall. But now, Carlos on his way to second base. He will get there, and that'll bring the tie run to the plate. That a boy. Q. Second consecutive double for Quentin. And a promising way to start the ninth inning. Ninety eight miles an hour, but Carlos loves the ball down. And no chance at all for Hunter, who does a nice job of getting to it, but not before Quentin Coast in the second day. And here's Alex. He's one for three. Hit the ball hard twice today. Also a score to run. Breaking ball. Now he says, "Why me?" And that's going to be out of play right side. 0 and 2 the count. Gonna bristle up right here, 51. And that's up high, that is 97. As you see against this guy, the more dangerous you become. Don't help him out. Here's the 2 2. And it's full. Souvenir right side. That one at 99. Nice job of staying alive. And a good battle. Another pitch at this one at 98. Math is going out there now to have a talk. Walden reached back, tried to get as much as he possibly could. But to this point, he can't get it by Alex. All four base hit right here, buddy. And that's ball four. Tying runs aboard. Nobody out. Here comes AJ. Like 
Butcher is going to come out and have a word with his young right hander. Oh, what a good at bat right there by Alex. Boy, spoiled some good pitches. Anywhere from 97 to 99, and he kept on battling until he finally got one well inside. After being down in the count 0 and 2. AJ's having a pretty good day. AJ two for three with an RBI. He just ripped one in the right field off Heron back in the seventh inning. Walden is kind of all over the place with all of his pitches. Mathis wants it low and away, and that ball. Misses well in off the plate. An eight pitch at bat and a good one. 99, but he missed with it. Come on, AJ. There's a bunt. That'll get the job done. Go to the. So the sacrifice, five free. Beautiful bunt by Pierzynski. Ducks on the pond, one out. And here comes Alexa. AJ not asked to bunt all that often, but he was asked this time, and he lays down a beauty. Even Kiasco with only one play, he just barely was able to get it there in time. On the second sacrifice this year. Come on, Alexi. Right man, right time, right spot, right now. 14 games, we've gone extras five times. Six wouldn't bother us a bit. I get these two home, and then you can worry about the rest of them. High chopper. And he's going to let it kick foul. Well, that's, that's a pretty wise play because he had no chance to get anybody. Now, Alexei's got the big hole, 0 and 2. I think Porter called him out on the swing. Well, he went. There's no question about that. So two down, and it's up to Omar. Looks like he was looking for half for an appeal. And so was Mathis, but. Al Porter said he went around far enough. Well, he made the right call, unfortunately. Come on, Omar. One time, buddy. Omar's one for three. Now the outfield. Shallow and left and center. And that pitch way outside at 98. Four runs, ten hits, no errors for them. Two runs, eight hits, no errors for us here in the bottom of the ninth with two down if you're just tuning in and Ducks on the pump. And the count two and up. Very shallow all the way around. Juan Pierre waiting. If Omar can keep it alive. There's one. It's going to be a little looper to left field. It's going to be pretty tough, but you're going to have to 
test the arm of Wells if he's going to either side at all. Rios has got a tremendous lead at second base. And this ball four out to load him up. So the second walk of the inning. He's due. He's 0 for 4. But he did a good lead, Omar. Generous call right there by Porter. Outfield again, very shallow. But once again, nobody paying attention to Rios, and he is a tying run. That's into left field. When that ball comes down, this game will be over. So the Sox score two in the seventh to get back in it. Threatened here in the bottom of the ninth. Meanwhile, we get swept by the Angels for the first time since 2005. And Heron for the first six was just too tough. Well, he ran into a bit of a buzz on the seventh inning. And then this Angel bullpen, which has been very good this year, once again comes on to do the job. Unfortunately, a four and six homestand, not anything we were looking for as we hit the road for a very tough road trip. And let's check out our MC player of the game. It is the 30 year old right handed Dan Heron who moves his record to 4 0, our GMC player of the game. So, from my partner, Stone Pony, Steve Stone, our director, Jim Andrew, our producer, John Walgren, and our associate producer, Kat Lysick, our technical manager, Mark Harper. The executive producer, Jim Porno Jr., and also the man who runs the booth up here, the mayor, Mean Joe Groove, also Mike Mayer, Jimmy Tianis, Golden Green. This is the Hawk. So long, everybody.